Tuesday. And hello, everyone. We welcome you to Craig McCord Field in Ayersville. Hard to believe already week nine of the high school football season alongside my partner, Miles Holiday. I'm Brady Robertson, partner. We've got ourselves a big showdown tonight in the Green Meadows Conference. Thanks to Ayersville's win over Antwerp creates a three-way tie atop the GNC standings. These last two weeks are going to go a long way to uh, settle that one. We start tonight here in Ayersville as the Pilots welcome in the Wayne Trace Raiders. Now, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Randy Roberts, the mayor of Northwest Ohio. And just as you say it, the GMC standings appear. Now, you look at Antwerp, Ayersville, and Tenor still fighting out for that first spot. But don't forget, Wayne Trace still fighting for a possible playoff position mm -hmm. as well. Uh, lots on the line. High stakes football here tonight. Now, we'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. But first of all, we want to tell you that a pregame show is sponsored by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com, member FDIC, equal housing lender. And partner, let's jump in and talk a little bit about the Raiders of Wayne Trace under third-year head coach Matt Holt, who's now 13-16 and 16 as the head man of the Raiders, coming in at 4-4, four and four, as you just saw there on the GMC standings, 3-2, and two, but more importantly is the number they currently sit in the Division Six Region 22 computer points. First team out at 17th. Mm, you got to get a win here and then get a win next week and then cross your fingers. Hope you get some good luck and get in there for that 16 or maybe possible 15 seed. Randy, the thing about this team is they're kind of a fuddling because they could very easily be 6-2 and two instead mm -hmm. of 4-4. Four and four. A couple things go their way. We had them against uh, Ayers, or against uh, Antwerp. Antwerp, that was, and that was a game that they were in until the very end when Antwerp kind of pulled away. So it's a capable football team. They're going to have to do it, though, tonight without a couple guys that are big contributors to them. Osborne, their leading tackler, a linebacker, he's going to be out. And uh, Cooper Wenslick, he's going to miss the game as well. And leaning on senior quarterback Kyle Stoller is completing 60% of his passes, 1,304 yards, 11 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Also has 285 yards on the ground. This is a team still in the ninth week of the season, still trying to find an identity on offense. Yeah, but one thing they do know, they have a guy on the outside that if you give him the football, he can score in a hurry. Jude Stoller, the wide receiver, Randy, 15 catches, five of them gone for TDs. Now, wind has picked up here. At Craig McCord Field, does that factor into what Wayne Trace does offensively? Today? I think you might see some uh, screens a little bit early in the game until you get it comfortable with the with the wind. And you know, anytime you hit November and October on the calendar, that means you better run the football a little bit, right? So they're going to try and get that running game to go. And if they're going to do it, it's going to have to be uh, the great work of the running back uh, Tucker Antoine. He is a Good running back, 11 touchdowns, 482 yards. We saw him two weeks ago. Tremendous quickness to the outside. 220 receiving yards as well. You talked about Jude Stoller. You got Brady Miller. Cole Moorhead has threats as well. And defensively, let's talk a little bit about Moorhead. He's going to become the leader at the linebacker spot. 66 tackles, three and a half sacks. Yeah, and look who's going to replace Osborne in the middle. It's going to be Stoller playing middle linebacker. So he's going to get uh, his fill of contact. Either they're going to be pass rushing and hitting him, or he's going to be filling an A and B gap. These are linebackers, Winan, Stoller, and Moorhead. Randy on the inside. They're going to have to do a great job because Ayersville is a predominantly inside the tackle running team. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, pilots of Ayersville under second year head coach Andrew Mickey coming in at uh, six and two. And you uh, saw the numbers there four and one tied atop the GMC, uh, GMC standings right now, ninth in Region 26. So they're a uh, pretty good positioning there. Uh, led uh, by a pretty good ground game that's been turning out about 190 yards a game. They sure are. They're, and they are about two minutes and 23 seconds away from being undefeated. And GMC Tenor went down a length of the field, scored a touchdown, or else they'd be undefeated in uh, in the uh, GMC. Uh, you take a look at the offense. It is Torin Naven. He is their big time runner, Randy. He is going to go over 1,000 yards at some point in time in this game. 943 yards, 5.7 yards per carry, 10 TDs. And his guys up front do a great job on him, especially Noah Bodie and Brady Clark. Guards will be pulling all day long, leading the running game for Ayersville. A quarterback for the uh, Pilots is senior Lucas Fishball. Just 41 complete of his passes, 48 of 116 for 619 yards, nine touchdowns, 
and 11 interceptions, but he does add 126 yards on the uh, ground. Yeah, the problem with him, though, is the amount of turnovers, right? He's just turned it over too much. You usually want your quarterback to have a lot more uh, touchdowns, throwing the ball than interceptions. 9 to 11 for him. He's going to be very smart with the football here tonight on homecoming. And a couple of uh, players to look at on defense. You talked a little bit about Kenevan, second on the team of tackles at 76. Brady Clark, the linebacker, leads his team with 82 and combined 13 tackles for loss. Yeah, not just Brady Clark. you got to call him the king, Brady Clark. That's right. He's, he was just crowned king of homecoming during the pregame festivities, so you know he's got to live up to that king title. And uh, what else are you looking forward to? Oh, well, finding out who's going to be the edge setter against this Wayne Trace uh, outside running game, and I believe it's going to be Abe Delano. Don't be surprised if they move him from side to side to the wide side of the field. Uh, Abe Delano, of course, everybody knows what a tremendous pitcher he is. going to go pitch in college, but he is a big dude, does a great job of setting the edge using his hands. They're going to need him to do that to stop that outside Wayne Trace running game. Let's get to everyone's favorite part of our pregame. Let's take a look at our tips of the game. Our tips to the game tonight brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Partner, you see him on the screen there. But the tips of the game tonight for the Wayne Trace Raiders. Yeah, number one, you got to pinch and press, right? Pinch and press. What I mean by pinch, defensive line, pinch in, take A and B gap away. This is an Ayersville run game that loves to go between the tackles. Make them bounce it. And then press, you better come up and get in the receiver's faces and see if Fishpaw is going to be able to beat you vertical. He likes to throw short. Make it pinch and press. Number two, next man up. We know Wenslick and Osborne are out. Who's going to fill those spots? It's important that they get good production from those spots. And then four verts, four verticals. This is an Ayersville team that loves a run zone. If you catch him in cover three, go vertical against that and see if you can get your big play receiver Stoller another touch for a big touchdown. And how about some keys to the game tonight for the Ayersville Pilots? Well, we just said Ayersville loves to run zone defense, right? Well, you better find receivers in that zone. Sometimes against zone uh, with zones, you like to fall into spots and forget about that. you got to find the receiver in that zone. Find the receivers and then get your hands on them. Number two, pad level. This is a very physical Ayersville football team up front. Make sure that your pad level stays low. Move that Wayne Trace defensive line off the ball. And then TK all day. Oh, you better believe it. Taranga Navin, 943 yards, 10 touchdowns, 5.7 yards per carry. You are going to love him, Randy, because he runs with an incredible body lean and he finishes runs. So give it to TK all day. Looking forward to what should be a good one. And again, our tips of the game and our pregame tonight have been brought to you by the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Looking forward to what should be a good one. The 48th meeting all time between Ayersville and Wayne Trace. And we'll have it for you next here on WOSN. Randy and Miles back with you here from Ayersville. Just about ready to go with our opening kick. Ayersville won the toss. Collected to defer, so Wayne Trace will get the ball first here on a homecoming night. Yeah, I always worried as a head football coach about homecoming, right? So many opportunities to be distracted. And of course, you're feeling really good about yourself after knocking off Antwerp in their 17-game win streak. So focus, so important on homecoming week. Squib kick, this one side the 10-yard line, trying to get to the outside. And he's going to be driven out of bounds near the 30. A good starting position for Wayne Trace. And it'll be interesting to find out exactly what Matt Holden has him planned for this game offensively. Of course, we saw them a couple weeks ago when they ran Wenslick almost exclusively in the second half against Antwerp. He's out of the game. So what does that mean for your offense? You like to throw the ball around with a capable stoler. You won't find a stronger arm in Northwest Ohio than Kyle Stuller. Let's see what he can do against this uh, win that has uh, picked up. Come out. Looks like in a uh, four-receiver set, single receiver. Come to the near side. Stoller in that shotgun is going to go opposite way. High pass. Like trying to set up a screen early on. That's going to be incomplete. They're very fortunate. Off the hands of the receiver, Fishpaw, the corner on that side was lurking. About a step away from it landing in his hands and Ayersville getting a great start with a pick six. It's going to bring up a second and ten following the incomplete pass. 
So Wayne Trace after this one will get uh, Paulding yet. So still, as far as computer points go, a lot on the line for the Raiders to try to uh, climb that final spot. Stoller, look at middle of the field, didn't see anything. Now he's going to drop this one right in the bucket as he's got Tucker Antoine down the sideline, and that's going to be enough for our first State Bank first down to the night. That really nice design. Look at Tucker Antoine avoid the contact with the outside linebacker to his side. You want to know where everybody was at deep there? Well, they ran a post to clear out the corner. Lead to attack Tucker Antoine out on the little wheel route. Nice execution off a of great design by Wayne Trace. 24 yards on that play, and it's a first down as uh, Wayne Trace has gotten into the Ayersville 46 scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill. Call or stop by so we can assist you with all of your insurance needs. And that was McConnell for Ayersville that contacted Tucker Antoine. All five receivers stacked, and someone from Ayersville will take a look at the replay here if we can. And a red through that one and made the stop, and I believe that was big zero, Jacob Miller. Yeah, sure is. He's going to arrive early. Why? Because nobody contacts him. If you're going to run quick screens, it's important for your receivers to block for your other receivers, or else it's a tackle for loss. Come off to a big play. Harrisville responds by getting a tackle for loss off the screen. It's going to go back to Wayne Trace's own 49-yard line. Ball in that far hash between the 49 and the 50, so we're going to call it a loss of five. It's going to bring up second and 15. Antoine working that left side, has a little bit of running room, is going to get the yardage and more as he finally gets out of bounds inside the Ayersville 45-yard line. Now, Dylan Hildebrand, watch him when he goes in motion for Wayne Trace. Nine times out of ten, they're going to run there, and here comes Wayne Trace, now going to go a little tempo on third down and six. And they're going to pick up eight on the run. Antoine with it again, trying to get to the outside. He's able to turn the corner, stays on his feet. He's to the 30, the 25, and finally inside, uh, out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, I think it might Here's come flag, back. Though, yep. Same play, just going to run to the other direction. Hildebrand with a, a little bit of a block. Let's see if we get it inside. Didn't really see where the hold was. Maybe it was going to be an illegal crack back. This Stoller came flying in. Let's see if we can pick it up. Saw Abe Delano, number 19, reach out and try to come up with the uh, stop here. Yeah, it's definitely going against Wayne Trace. Yeah, this is going to be walked off. We see one of the officials already beginning to. Yeah, here's the back. wide view. Hildebrand's going to kick it out against Delano. Good move by Tucker Antoine to cut up inside. Yeah, I'm wondering it. Oh, that's a rough call. I didn't really see it, partner. Did you see it? No, the only thing I saw was possibly Noah Parody, number 70, kind of drive his man down to the ground. I don't know if, there's, if he held him and pushed him down. After the penalty, this one comes back to the 47-yard line. Third and 11. This one underthrown, incomplete. Stoller under some duress had to get rid of that one. No, if you watch it and you're like, where were all the defensive linemen? Well, that's called the radar front. Everybody in a two-point stance, who's going to blitz, who's going to fall off, makes it really tough for your offensive linemen. We'll show you a diagram of that maybe on the next offensive series for Wayne Trey so you can get a good look at it. So it's going to bring up fourth down. The punt team uh, making its way onto the field. Another part where uh, they're going to be without the services of Cooper Wenslick. Handles the punting, so I believe uh, Stoller will uh, be the punter tonight as well. Hangs this one high in the air, angled out of bounds. And we will see where the yodeler will come to a stop here. Well, how big was that penalty, though? Instead of first down about the 25-yard line, you're cooking on offense, Wayne Trace, all of a sudden you're punting the football. The blink of an eye, things really changed. Ayersville's going to get this at their own 25 it looks like. Delano and Knaven are mostly the two backs next to Fishpaw. And they will flip flop them though according to where they want to run the football, both capable runners. It's two backs in the backfield as Lucas Fishpaw in a shotgun. Run's going to come up the middle, Delano with it. Yeah, good vision by Delano, but just cuts on the inside foot, so he's going to lose his footing. He would have had about five more yards. 
Could have been a big play. Instead, he picks up three. Still positive yardage on first down for Ayersville. It's going to bring up second and seven from about the 28-yard line. My partner, you're going to see one of your favorite things. Quarterback coming to the sideline, getting a play, running back to the huddle. That's something Andrew Mickey likes to do with his quarterback, Fishpaw. Fishpaw's got two backs, two receivers to that far side. Fake to the first man. This is the big man. Even with it, Even's going to have himself a State Bank first down out near the 40-yard line. He's going to get great kick out blocked by the King, Brady Clark. That's going to spring him. Down block and kick out. You fake it to Delano on the inside. Come back, and you see the body lean that is impressive by TK. He can run the ball with the best of them. Even will get himself 10 yards out to the 38-yard line. See both... Uh, could even and Delano in the backfield. This is Delano, Delano working that right side. He's going to continue to move that pile forward as those baby blue uniforms will move all the way to the 45 yard line. Austin Spees, the defensive coordinator for Wayne Trace, he's going to have to make a decision sooner or later. If Harrisville is going to be predominantly run right through the tackles, they're going to have to come out of that three down look, fill the box up. Right now they're trying to stop run with only six men in the box. That's a tough ask defensively against a very good run team like Harrisville. After a gain of uh, seven on the run, it's going to bring up a second and three. Harrisville with that same look. Two receivers go to that far side with two backs. This is Kneven, Kneven right at the sticks and then was pushed back. Judging by where the uh, line judge came in at, looks like he's gonna be about half a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, good call by you. And you see their bitty cheerleaders are here today. There's gonna be some cold ladies down on the field. 62 degrees they said at kickoff. Not sure I believe them, right? Wind's gonna be 13 to 22 miles an hour all day long. It is uh, bitter conditions out there. Third and about a yard coming up here for the Pilots. Opening drive of the night. Single receiver each way with that uh, split back backfield. Is Pile continuing to move forward, still moving forward. It's going to be a first down. It looks like Delano will get the call here. He does. Yeah, it's going to be power. Going to bring Knaven leading the way for Delano, and you're going to bring the guard around to lead the way. That's just a lot of bodies, not enough beef up front for Wayne Trace. Only three men down. You're getting outnumbered at the point of attack until Wayne Trace fills that box back up. If I'm Ayersville, I'm just keeping running the football. Pick up a nine is enough for the State Bank first down. Pilots with again on the Wayne Trace side of the field, the 44-yard line. And a slot uncovered here to the near side. Fish Paul's going to give it off. This is Kneven. Kneven trying to get to the outside. Nice stop in the open field made there. As Brady Miller able to make the stop. And Brady Miller's going to come up, barely get around the waist. You got to be careful if you're going to arm tackle big fellas like TK. They can run through that in a hurry. Got to get that shoulder pad involved. Pick up a five on the run. going to bring up second and five. The Pilots doing what they do best, kind of chewing up some time on the clock here. And not a lot of different looks out of Ayersville early. No need, right? Just stay twins, go to the side, tie down to the other side, and we're just going to keep running towards it. Is the first pass of the night. This one's going to be thrown out to the flat, able to make the first man miss is Ray Wolfram. Wolfram will get maybe a yard or two. A little bit of difference this year for Ayersville. You see Fishpaw coming to the sideline, getting the play, and it's the offensive coordinator, Coach uh, Benfeld, giving him the call, and he runs back in. Last year, Benfeld was up in the press box. A little bit po different point of view when your offensive coordinator on the sideline as is in the press box. Third and about three coming up for the Pilots at the Wayne Trace, 37. Opening drive for the Pilots, about four and a half minutes old. Trying to break to the outside. It's a good run. It's even tripped up by one of his own linemen there, but he'll have enough for the State Bank first down. Now going to get the backside that's going to lead the way. Kick out and then follow the big lineman. It's nothing but crush it down on play side, loop it around with your H-back, 
and your lineman bleeding away. That could have sprung for a big touchdown. TK just barely got stopped. First down, down to the 27, so 10 more yards. Ninth play of the drive coming up here for the Pilots. Taking a look at that split back look. Two receivers come to the far side. Now we are going to have a stoppage and I believe a sideline warning called on Ayersville. Yeah, they're going to call a sideline warning against Ayersville, and they pointed to a coach that's about 25 yards away, down about the 50-yard line. That's a tough call. It's all right, though, because the first one doesn't mean anything, right? That's right. There's Delano working that right side. We see someone kind of knifing in to make this stop. Was that Moorhead, number 12, first one kind of reached in there? It was Moorhead because Eli Burner missed him, number 36. They keep running this counter, fake it, and then come back around. That Burner comes leading the way. There was no one there. Moorhead shows up a little bit late, comes underneath it, makes the tackle. Run's going to go for about four. We're going to call it second and six from the 23. Now we'll see single receiver each way. This is Kniven now turning it up from that right side. He's going to carry more defenders. You see him late there for Wayne Trace, trying to rip that football away. Kniven able to hold on to that and get enough for another State Bank first down. Now there's just nobody there, right? You get one block down, you'll bring Clark around, and there's nobody there. You have a three down lineman set, five linebackers behind it. At some point in time, Wayne Trace, those guys are gonna have to sneak up, get closer, or you're gonna have to start bringing backer blitzes. It's gonna be decision time, not too long for Austin Spies, defensive coordinator at Wayne Trace. Yeah, Brady Miller, number five, was just along for a while, uh, along for a ride there. Pile's gonna go straight ahead here on first down. That doesn't look like much of a gain there. Yeah, nice job by Ethan Cordaway for Ayersville. Talk about finishing blocks. Just pestering his guy, driving him down to about the five yard line. Official had to tell him, stop playing patty cake on him, get your hands off him. He says, Mr. Official, it's my job to block all the way to the whistle. Gain of a yard on the play is gonna bring up second and nine from the 14. See that split back look with Fishpaw in the shotgun. Backer Looking. creeping for Wayne Trace. Here they come. Play call went down this time. It is Fishpaw who's going to keep it. And he's able to get to about the 11 or maybe 12 yard line. And that was Kyle Stoller, the guy that is playing in Osborne's place. Number 19. Got those little feet pitter pattering. If you're an offensive lineman, you want to keep your eyes up so you see those feet moving, right? Linebackers like to get mm -hmm. in their stance, but they you start to see them creep. They're doing it for a reason. You know, they're going to be coming up that time. Ayersville missed Kyle Stoller, who made the play at the last scrimmage. This opening drive for Ayersville began with 10.37 to play in our opening quarter. You've seen our carry insurance scoreboard. Clock now under three minutes to go here in quarter number one. 13th play of the drive coming up for Ayersville. Yeah, now they're pinching the defensive tackles inside, going A's and B's with them. Looking to throw again, has a man out in the flat, and that is going to be quickly brought down. As Jordan Lotz, number 23, one of the first men there. Yeah, really good recognition by Lotz. Bit a little bit on the play fake and comes out there, but best thing he did was not grab the face mask. How many times you see a guy flying out there late, gets his hand on the face mask for a penalty. Huge fourth down for Wayne Trace defensively right here. Fourth and about a four and a half, close to five. See the football just inside the 10 yard line. It brings some pressure, especially outside. You know, Ayersville's gonna wanna get uh, Fishpaw on the perimeter. And we're gonna have a whistle and Ayersville wants to talk about it. So timeout on the field, we'll step aside as well with a big fourth down coming up when we return. Well, Ayersville making sure everything is all set. Pilots uh, find themselves in a big fourth down situation early. Fourth and about four, just inside their 10 yard line. Partner, they put together a 13 play drive starting back at their own 25. They have taken up about uh, eight plus minutes so far this opening quarter. Yeah, Last see, thing you want to do is come away with no points. You see Fishball with his hands up, like what's going on? Well, the official just told Knaven he had to leave the field. Looked like an equipment issue. 
This is really going to change things up because you come out of a timeout, you have the play that you want. And Brandon Bainfeld, offensive quarter now, looking at his card again, going to have to change everything that you want. Going back to fish Paul here. Now they're going to have to hurry with uh, the play clock down at 10. Yeah, the pilots are going to have to run this off in a hurry. Two receivers come to the near side with those split backs. Fish Paul looking to throw. He's going to fire this one. It's tipped and incomplete. I think it was Kyle Stoller that read the eyes of the quarterback. He's going to get his right hand down. It. Yep, going to be right there. You're going to see big right hand. And that's a guy that plays above the rim on, in the winter in basketball. About 1,000 rebounds a game. He recognized what was going on. Gets a deflection. There's going to be a bubble and slant behind it. The slant was there, but Stoller ends the day, ends the drive for Ayersville. What a break for the Raiders. They're going to take over at their own nine but they're going to turn away Ayersville from scoring any points here with a minute 47 to go in our opening quarter. They've got to be extremely frustrating for Andrew Mickey, right? You put together a great drive. You're just grounding up Wayne Trace. You get inside the red zone, this thing's kind of bogged down. Looking to run here on a first down. Antoine with this is Tucker Antoine with it. He'll get about a yard, it looks like, to the 10. Yeah, it looked like they were going to go right to the line of scrimmage and go again, but you know, wisely going back to the huddle, especially in your own inside, own 10. You don't want to hush and, and rush things up, and the next thing you know, you turn the ball over. Take your time. Got to get a couple first downs, though. Flip the field if you're Wayne Trace. Last thing they want to do, yeah, like you said, is punt this thing. But with just over a minute left to go in the quarter, they'd like to at least run this opening quarter out. Stoller looking to throw to that far sideline and no flags, that single coverage near the sideline. Now it's Fishball, great job on the outside. The corner just ran even with the receiver, forced him to the sideline and then didn't panic, right? The ball was in the air. How many times do you see DBs panic because the ball's in the air? They don't know where it's at. Just held his ground. The position was his. Interesting call with the win at your back going vertical, trying to take for the big play. Third down, huge play now for Wayne Trace. And third and nine from their own 10. A couple of receivers to the near side, one to that far side. Stoller in the shotgun. Now under a little bit of pressure, trying to step up, balls come loose. Pilots say they have it here, waiting to unpile the bodies. We're gonna take a look at this one. Well, we had him a couple weeks ago. Remember when we were talking about Stoller running around with the football like a loaf of bread? Well, this time it's going to come out and get him. The ball comes free. You see the contact, and it squirted out. A lot of uh, baby blue around it to get it, and I think it was Canavan that came up with it. Yeah, it looked like the double four recovers that. And so the Pilots in good shape here. They've got it. The Wayne Trace nine under a minute to go here in quarter number one. Now watch the motion. Delano working at it right side on his way in, and he's going to score the Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. I did a great job of handling Winans on that side. A good linebacker for Wayne Trace tried to fill it up, but they are just outnumbered. Watch how quickly they get a pile of bodies in front of it. Look at that. Delano not even contacted really until about the goal line because of massive humanity that the pilots put in front of them. So the 14 play drive goes for nothing, but Ayersville would take advantage of the turnover. Yeah, official sent one of the Wayne Trace players off the field with either an equipment. And it's drawn the ire of one of the coaches for Wayne Trace who's come over near the numbers. So the official's dealing with that before we get to the extra point, which looks like it's going to be a two-point attempt here for Ayersville. Yeah, it was Austin Spies, the defensive coordinator, and he's got to be upset giving up a touchdown right away. Nice. As Knieven is going to get around and get the two-point. 
Ayersville able to take advantage and take a look at the replay. Yeah, great blocks on the inside, get the seal. It is never a good feeling as a defensive coordinator when a guy goes in the end zone and he's not even touched. Ayersville winning the battle of the line of scrimmage. So the Pilots with the 8-0 lead here late in our opening quarter and we'll take a break on WOSN. Well, a quick win play drive for Ayersville ends with uh, Abe Delano scoring from uh, nine yards out. It is our first Leland Smith Insurance uh, Services touchdown of the night. Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. Eight nothing following the two point conversion there as the pilots kick off with 50 seconds to go in quarter number one. And Delano having a little bit of an issue with that ball staying on that tee. How many times have you seen it, like in baseball, right? Guy hits a home run, makes a great play, comes up next at bat, hits a home run. And you, you see it now with scoring a touchdown and kicking off, right? You see that all the time. <laughs> it's true. This one's going to be fielded yeah. near the 10, and a big stick applied there as Hudson Myers on the return for Wayne Trace. Yeah, fantastic by Leo Barraza, who's been battling and a shoulder injury all season long. Started off the year fantastic. Good to see him back on the field. Nice to have a guy like Barraza that can run down and make tackles. And yeah, Barraza, one of those guys that uh, Ayersville is counting on should they make a uh, postseason run. They look like they're in pretty good shape. So we'll know a lot here following the action tonight heading into week 10. Three receivers come to the near side. We'll see one of those go in motion as they're going to run the jet sweep with Moorhead, and that is going to go for maybe a yard. Now you'll see it's very tough to get to the edge against this Ayersville defense. Why? Because the outside linebackers sometimes are on the line of scrimmage, sometimes they're off the line of scrimmage, but you know what they do so well, Randy? They use their hands and they get underneath blockers and seal the edge, turning everything back to their buddies inside. And that's Clark on the front side making the tackle. Number 58, the King. Another big tackle for him for Ayersville. It did give him a gain of two on the run. It's going to bring up second and eight now with the ball at the 26-yard line. Stoller's going to fake this one. He's going to take a big hit. This was that King Brady Clark? Having a little fun here in homecoming night. You well, see him? Delano just hanging out. And he's going to come down the line of scrimmage, get to Stoller. And it's never a good feeling when you're the quarterback and you run the football and everybody that's blocking for you is looking at you, right? That means you're going to have to navigate a lot of light blue, Columbia blue, to make first down. That's the end of the opening quarter. Ayersville with a lead after one. We'll take a break here on WOSF. Well, they're having a little bit of an issue with the uh, chains on the uh, far side. They get them uh, switched around, trying to get them set here. So the scoreboard showing third and eight at the, if you take a look at the chains, they're at about third and five. And let's see what is going on as they're gonna hold up play. I think the Ayersville coaches are the first to notice it. So we'll see what happens here. Well, if it's third or five or third eight, it doesn't matter. He feels that this is the biggest play of this game so far for Wayne Trace, right? They cannot get the ball back to Ayersville in a hurry after Ayersville's run game is just slicing and dicing them. Trying to still get them figured out. Now it looks like we've got everything set. I think they had it backwards there. Right? So third and now they've got it set third and eight. So we're ready to play here in quarter number two. Looks like quarter coverage for Ayersville. All right, now see Fishpaw down here to your near side. He's got outside responsibility. So if you run a vertical right by him, you got a big chance for a big play. Stoller looking to throw. He's going to roll out to that far side. Tries to lay this one in. Another good one. Pass is caught on that far sideline, and it's going to be complete for State Bank first down. Now it's going to be the second time that they've hit this wheel route to Tucker Antoine. This is a great job by the quarterback Stoller buying time. Then how about that pass just drop it in the bucket? Huge, huge first down. Might keep Wayne Trace in this football game. Game goes for 17. So Wayne Trace will have it. Raiders quickly get to the line. See a man going in motion once again. Hand off to uh, Tucker Antoine. Antoine up the middle. Antoine might get a yard, it looks like, to the 44. 
Yeah, Clark in again on the tackle. Tough to handle Brady Clark, the senior defensive linebacker for this team. Reads extremely well, just attacks the line of scrimmage. You see him right there to the near side. Perfect linebacker stance. Second and nine from the 44. Stola looking to throw, He's trying to come near side. Nothing open there. He's going to roll out to that far sideline. Ball's going to come loose at the end. That's going to be incomplete. Second time on this drive, Stiller's getting out of the pocket. You're going to see it right here. No signal to his outside receiver, Jude Stoller, to come back to him. He's looking to his left. There's nobody open. Pretty good protection as Ayersville only brought three. He finds his receiver, Stoller, just can't bring it in. It would have been another big first down for Wayne Trace. Instead, it's going to be third and nine from the 44. Stoller in that shotgun again, looks to throw, trying to step up, has time, had a man open middle of the field, just a little too high looking for Brady Miller. Yeah, Brady Miller's running still and is in the end zone. Hildebrand hooks up right there and it gets the linebackers to come. You see Brady Clark try to get to Hildebrand, should have been getting depth, huge hole between the safeties and linebacker. And boy, that would have been a huge play. Brady Miller would have been celebrating. We will see the Raiders punt. Stoller stands at his own 30. See a couple of men back at about their 25. They're going to fake, and Stoller's going to have nowhere to go, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. Yeah, I'm not sure this was a design fake. We'll have to take a look at it again because Stoller holds it for a second, then takes off with it. This is going to cost about 40 yards in field position. Let's watch it. Stoller, a little bit of high snap. Sees a guy come free, and I think that kind of spooked him. That was Barraza that was coming from the outside. And you see the reaction of Matt Holden, the head coach of Wayne Trace on that sideline. Definitely not a reaction of a guy that called a fake punt. Ayersville will take over in Wayne Trace territory for the second time, this time at the 38 here, just under 11 to go. First half on our carry insurance scoreboard. You know, Wayne Tracers can't get out of their own way, right? First a turnover inside their own 10 after a great defensive stand. And now you know, really it is a turnover, you know, not punting the football. That is about 40, 45 yards in field position. Here's Kneven just plowing forward. He's going to have uh, close to first down yardage. He's, he's going to get just inside the 30. Yeah, their favorite run play. Out of the two back set. It's just a different way to run the I formation. Have one back lead for the other. You get a chance, we'll show you exactly how they like to run that. So we're going to call it a gain of about eight. It's a second and just inside of two, the ball inside the 30 yard line. This time it is Delano, that left side. He will have the State Bank first down as he moves inside the 25. Good read by Moorhead. He, he just doesn't have enough behind him with the size. Delano with his huge size. This pushes him forward at 6'3", 215, going against Moorhead, who is a 5'9", or 6'160". Big man beats little man every day. First down from the 23 after the run of seven. Just get the feeling Ayersville wouldn't mind doing this all night. Man goes in motion. Good job, good job. Torn can even on the run. As can even continues to move forward, he will get to about the 15 yard line. They brought Garrett McConnell, number 24. Bright future for this guy, just a freshman. Brought him in motion, kicked out the end. Every block down, big yardage again. This is a, a very big front for Ayersville, and they are just wearing down Wayne Trace. Three down linemen for Wayne Trace, not doing well enough against five guys up front. Linebackers are slow to read. It's a bad combination for Wayne Trace defensively. Second and a short two from the 15. This fishball went up to one of his linemen. 
This is Delano with it. He's going to turn his back, and he'll get enough for another State Bank first down. Caleb Mosier, number 50, grabs him from the backside. There also been more positive yardage. You got a man down for Wayne Trace, and I think it's Paraday. Noah Paraday, number 70. So again, our first downs tonight brought to you by the State Bank. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So they're going to take a look at an injured player for Wayne Trace. While they take a look at him, we'll take a time out here in WOSF. Well, good to see that it uh, looks like Noah Paraday able to get up and uh, make his way over uh, to the sideline. So we'll go back to Ayersville running the football. There's a look at uh, Parody here. And partners, something you want to talk about with the, what uh, Ayersville's been able to do successfully most of the night tonight offensively. Yeah, one of the things that they love to do is it's just an old ISO, right? You're doing it out of a two-back set. So you get the back to the near side, goes up and gets one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, and then you hand it off to the running back to that side. If you're an old football fan, you remember the I formation? Well, it's just a different way of doing it, putting the two backs beside the quarterback out of shotgun. And right now they got a single receiver lined up to that far side. It is Delano is going to run over a defender and get in for the Leland Smith Insurance touchdown. Yeah, Delano uses all 6'3", 215. A.B. all day. Great block right there at the point of attack. And then I'm just going to treat you like a speed bump on the highway. Abe hey, Delano styling and profiling like a semi-truck going down the highway. 12 yards out for his second touchdown to the night. And again, our touchdown's brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance Services, your first call for all of your insurance needs. And once again, pilots are going to line up and go for two. Haven't done a lot of kicking this season. Is Kneven. Kneven's going to get himself in. And for what it's worth, Kneven's got his second two-point conversion of the night. That's a smart run because, really, it's played pretty well by Wayne Trace. The hole's blocked up a little bit, but you see that little body lean, turn his body sideways, found his way to the hole, and then gets himself another two-point conversion. That's going to be a sticker on that helmet. That helmet's going to be filled up by the end of tonight. 16 up and Ayersville with the leader for Wayne Trace. We'll take a break here on WOSF. 16 up and now Ayersville with the lead over at Wayne Trace as Abe Delano with a second touchdown of the night. He's gone from nine yards now 12 yards. And he'll also be doing the kicking here. And so this is turning into a pivotal drive for the Raiders on offense if they want to stay in this one. Yeah, great point by you. Might be the biggest drive of the year. Remember, this is a team. Yeah, not really in the league race, but they're still fighting for a playoff opportunity. Got to get in this football game. If they go three and out, the way Ayersville is running the football, it might get out of hand. This one fielded at about the 12-yard line. is coming across the field trying to find something with Hudson Myers. Myers will get this one out to about the 20, and that is where the Raiders will start. Yeah, Hudson ran about 40 yards to the sideline, but maybe got about five on to return. Just was looking for a hole. Nothing ever developed. Couldn't get the blocks to get to the sideline. 16 so nothing in our scoreboard tonight. Brought to you by Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by so we can assist you with all of your insurance needs. Last thing you want to do if you are Wayne Trace after allowing the touchdown is go three and out. Give the football right back to this Ayersville team that uh, has shown that they will uh, run out as much time as they can. Off this clock, Stoller looking to throw, trying to set up a screen from in the middle of the field. Don't know if that's where it was designed to. But Moorhead is able to sneak his way out for about a yard. Now they're trying to run the tunnel screen. You see the defensive lineman running up field. Not a great route by Moorhead. And the linebackers for Ayersville do such a great job of playing off the line of scrimmage, tough to reach. Nothing really positive on that play for Wayne Trace. Give him a yard to the 29, or 21, excuse me, where it's going to bring up second and nine. Now look at the Clark and Knaven, the linebackers right there, playing perfect depth. Stoller in the shotgun is going to give this one Tucker Antoine. Antoine's out at foot race. I run it everyone to the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and he's in for the Leland Smith Insurance Service touchdown. Oh, Wayne Trace, they needed a huge play to get back in this football game and no flags down anywhere and they're gonna get it. They're gonna catch Ayersville with Clark on an outside blitz. 
Good job blocking at the play side. Knaven overruns it. And Tucker Antoine, he's just going to split the secondary. And is he fast or is he fast? Look at Tucker Antoine. He is a big time sprinter. Celebration time for Wayne Trace in the end zone. 79 yards for the Leland Smith Insurance Service touchdown. Your first call for all of your insurance needs. Now we will see Wayne Trace looks like they are going to go for two. Direct snap to Antoine at quarterback, trying to find some room. And it looks like he is gonna end up just short. So big conversion miss there is gonna keep this a two possession game. But Wayne Trace able to break through. They get the touchdown 16-6. And we'll take a break here on WOSF. Now, partner, we talked about how Wayne Trace needed to score to stay in that one. I don't think we were expecting the two-play drive where Tucker Antoine scores from 79 yards out, but now 16-6. Problem is Wayne Trace is giving the ball to Ayersville now with still seven and a half minutes left to play in our opening half. He is half. one fast Tucker, isn't he? Man, Tucker Antoine can run. That dude split the secondary in a hurry. I want to see him run against Randy Roberts someday. No race, not, not even close. High kick, fair catch is going to be called for one of the up men made at about the 36 yard line. That's a smart play. You can fair catch it, and you're not going to get contacted. A little bit of a trickeration there by Wayne Trace, where Cal Winans is the one that kicks it, trying to get a little pooch, hit the ground, make sure it's a scramble, and then you guys get it. But well played by the special teams unit. Of Ayersville. Well, they're going to mark that at the 37 here with seven and a half to play before halftime. All right, so you got a little bit of life if you're Wayne Trace. Just put some points on the board for the first time tonight. See if he has some juice defensively. Here's Kneven on first down. He's going to weave his way ahead. He's going to be just shy of midfield, and it looks like it's going to be enough for the State Bank first down. Yeah, another great job. Look at the down blocks just moving all the white jerseys out of the way. Just kind of refilling with the powder blue jerseys, and your running backs behind it. Can even will pick up 12 as he'll move it out just uh, near midfield. We'll call it the 49. Might be closer to the 48. You remember years ago when Edgerton was running so well with Hunter Prince? And they had Eli Branham in front of him, right? And they were getting all those bodies out in front of him. Very reminiscent. You know, of course, Andrew Mickey had to defend that when he was at uh, Fairview as the defensive coordinator. It looks like one of the officials talking here is the clock. But continue to run when it should have stopped for him to reset the chain. So we're going to take just a moment. Looks like that is now taken care of. Uh, Brooks Sensabaugh is checked in at the defensive line position, number 71. See Trying to get a little bit bigger, Wayne Trace. See that motion again. Delano is going to follow the man in motion. Works that left side. He'll get into Wayne Trace territory. Hey, here's the thing, though, right? Wayne Trace, you think you have them stopped and you look up, they're still getting five yards every time they carry the football. That's the problem. Gain of close to five down inside the 47, close to the 46. Follow 24 for Ayersville. Garrett McConnell, they brought him in motion last time to kick out. It is exactly what they do again as Kneven is going to get inside the 45 down to the 44. We'll give him about two or three. It's going to bring up a third and short. Oh, let's think ahead, right? If you're Ayersville, you've got the two score lead. Depends what happens here on third down, but if it's close on fourth down, you go, right? Oh, yeah. yeah you're the way you've been getting yards mm -hmm. at a time. You've been dominating the line of scrimmage. Don't allow Wayne Trace a little bit of life by punting it. I think even if you get nothing here, you still go for it. Well, I would agree with that, yeah. I like my run game if I'm Ayersville. See that H-back once again to the left side. He'll come in motion. That is the freshman McConnell. And it is Fishpaw. This time he's going to keep it himself. He'll get to the 40, and that's going to be enough for another State Bank first down. Yeah, this is almost unfair, isn't it? 
Great job. The quarterback keeps it because the defense vacates. He's been uh, just absolutely eating them alive with that pull. Brady Clark comes around, getting all the bodies in front of the running back. Defense vacates, and you get the first down because the quarterback just sneaks those yards. Yep. He pulled that right out of the bread basket of Delano. Now after the first down, Ayersville at the Wayne Trace 40. This time the give does go Delano. Delano is going to a little spin a Rooney, a little stay on your feet a Rooney, and it is enough for the State Bank first down to the 10 yard line. Gee whiz, look at this guy just rumble. One guy runs right through, two guys with the spin a Rooney right through, third guy get off me, dude, I'm running. Another guy, four, five, six guys contact Delano. He is just dragging white jerseys for big yardage. 29 yards, he'll get him down to the 11-yard line. It's going to be enough where Ayersville can get another first down at about the one as we play inside five minutes to go. Opening half on our carry insurance scoreboard. Split backs line up once again. This is Knieven, and did he dive in? The official wants the football, and it's because it is a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Now they're going to bring it around again. See the kick out blocked by Clark yet again. Naven's going to run through one tackle of Stoller. And just with the body lean of the other, Stoller dives into the end zone. The big diesel truck, TK, running big time for a touchdown. Taryn can even in from 11 yards out. Adds on to that lead here as we'll see the pilots go 4-2. Connell in motion to that left side. It is Delano, and the two point by Delano is gonna be good. So Ayersville able to add on to the lead. Now 24-6, Pilots in front. We'll take a break here in WOSN. Well, the Ayersville Pilots with their third rushing touchdown of the night. This time it is Torin Kinevin from 11 yards out. Abe Delano with the two point after getting the first two touchdowns. As a 24-6, you see there in our carry insurance scoreboard. Still 4.41 left to go before halftime. Kickoff is going to be fielded again at about the 11 or 12-yard line. It's Hudson Myers trying to find a little bit more running room. And I might have been told this time more straight ahead, not as much side to side. A little bit better return that time for the uh, Raiders. Yeah, did you see who's on the tackle for Ayersville? If you're playing this Ayersville team, Andrew Mickey will tell you, you're going to have to play every phase. You can't just be one of those superstars that sits on the sideline during special teams. That was Torn Knaven, number 44, that was in on that tackle. So Raiders are going to start this drive at their own 35, four and a half to play here before halftime. A good uh, shot of number seven, Leo Barraza, down here for Ayersville. Young man had a tackle on special teams earlier. He was out a lot of time with a shoulder injury, but he is back on the field, and he is going to be a spark plug for this team moving forward if he's healthy. Stoller's going to fake the handoff. Long throw coming to the near sideline, trying to get it out to Brady Miller. Miller's going to get this one out across the 40. This looks like we might have an injured man down for Ayers Miller. Yeah, just free yardage, right? You're playing way off the inside slot. Get a little bit of block on the outside by Moorhead. And I see Moorhead coach. I meant to do a better job on the perimeter with the block, but hey, it's still positive yardage. So I can take a look at the uh, injured player for Ayersville. So while they tend to him, we'll take a break here in WOSN. Well, it is uh, Lucas Fishpaw, the uh, quarterback on offense, who is uh, the injured player, but it looks like he was able to get up, make his way over to the home sideline. See what uh, pilots have planned for him for the rest of the night. He looked a little woozy, didn't he? Hope he's, he's going to be okay. Have uh, Brady Sartman, a 5'8", uh, 170-pound freshman, as the backups. We'll see if uh, he'll get any playing time. Back to action here. It's going to be second and three. And it's going to be Tucker Antoine with the run here. And it looks like he might get a yard. 
Yeah, this Ayersville defense, it's what you call slant and angle. They're going to take the defensive lineman. They're going to predetermine which way they're going to slant, either to the weak or angle to the strong. That time they did a great job of uh, slanting, taking away the inside run. Huge third down for Wayne Trace. Fighting and clawing to stay in this football game. A third and two coming up here. Four receivers set. One of those receivers will go in motion. Stoller looking to throw. This one in traffic is going to be ripped away. Incomplete. Man does more than just run the football in offense. Abe Delano comes up with a big stop. Yeah, Delano's had himself a heck of a night. First on offense, this time on defense. You know, plays the hands of the receiver, Hildebrand. Just knocks it down and then helps out the official. Just see him get up and say, it's incomplete, not in my house. Wayne Trace is going to go for it here on fourth down. Down by a couple of scores, and it looks like they're going to be a yard short. I think Eli Burner is the first guy to contact the number 36 in the backfield. Looks like Wayne Trace was trying to catch Ayersville by surprise by going quick on the ball on fourth and two. Great job by Ayersville. Hey, now they can th start thinking about putting away this game. They still have 325 left, positive yardage at the 44. And Ayersville might just salt this thing away early in this first half. So they will start on the Wayne Trace side of the field, like Miles said once again. And as long as you got the uh, two backs, and now it looks like we are going to have a penalty as we do see new man in at quarterback for the Pilots, but it looks like it is Ryan and not Ryan Mag. Ryan? Ryan. Named after the greatest second, second baseman, baseman of all time. Lou Whitaker. Uh, that's what we yes. learned. Yes. Yeah. Ryan Sandberg, from what I understand, you Cub fans liked him. So. He was a, a decent player. He was. He was. He really was. We joke, of course, have known Coach Mag for a long, long time. So once he watches this, so. <laughs> boys, you know it's Ryan and not Ryan. You know, Coach, I've known your son since he was your ball boy, about eight years old. So yeah, I always wonder, like, when when you're gonna have a child and you want to name it after a sports figure, what is that conversation like with, with the the wife or yeah? You know, how's that go, honey? I have an idea. He's saying that he had to name his son after a baseball player since he's a baseball coach. Uh, I, I just think you know it, it, what the reaction is of the of the female in the party that is having the child. I have carried this child for nine months, and you're telling me we have to name him after a sports figure. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, honey. That's, that's exactly, what I want. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right. Both teams making their way back on following the timeout here. So still, 3:24 to go before halftime. Ayersville. Back themselves up five yards with the procedure penalty, so it's going to be first and 15. Still starting on the weight trace side of the field at the 49-yard line. Delano with it. He's going to be stopped after about a yard, just trying to pick his way through the right side. Not a whole lot of running room that time. Yeah, Winans blows it up, forces it outside to his buddies. And then for the first time tonight, really gang tackling for Wayne Trace. It's got to be a little bit heartening for Wayne Trace. Austin Spees, your defensive coordinator, sees guys flying to the football for the first time. Also on that play, they went to a four down lineman set for the first time. Let's see if they keep that look, kind of matching strength finally on the line of scrimmage. Second and 14. There's those uh, split backs looking to throw his fish paw back in at quarterback. Trying to get this one to Wolf from near first down yardage, but just incomplete. Yeah, fake inside. A little bit of hands in his face. Might have affected the throw. It's online. That's going to be catching and a run for a first down. It's going to bring up a third and 14 here. And of course, Fishball was shaken up on the last defensive series. Good to see him back in the football game. Let's break the huddle here. Just under 10 on the play clock. Single receiver to that far side. We'll see the H back in motion. There's Delano up the middle. Once he's through that first wave, there's no one there. And now he's going to slow down. 
don't mean to laugh, slowed down because he wanted to deliver a hit, and he's going to be down inside the 10-yard line. That's kind of a weird play. It looked like it was going to be a pass at first because he got the handoff all weird. Oh, there's going to be just a tremendous block on the edge. Holy moly, knocking people down everywhere, left and right, and then Delano is going to <laughs> kind of throttle down, right? Hit the air brakes on the big semi truck. And it's gonna go 41 yards for the run. It is enough for the State Bank first down. So he gets this here with under two minutes to go in our opening half. See those split backs lined up once again. This time it's Kneven. Kneven trying to work his way in, and he's gonna score the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown. Not just too easy. Take a look at it. Going to get a great block out front, down block again, and then the lead block of Noah Bodie. And there's absolutely no one there for TK to celebrate all day in the end zone. So now 30 to 6 here, and we'll see the Pilots go for two once again. Delano with a couple of scores, and now Kinevin with a couple of scores. Yeah, he might be close to 100 yards in this first half. A couple big runs already. See those split backs. This is Delano trying to go for two, and on second effort, reaches out, gets the pylon, and he will get the two-point conversion. Yeah, this is really good athletic ability by Delano. It looks like he's going to be contacted about the three. Keeps those legs churning and then uses that free hand to brace himself. And how about the reach with that football? Good athleticism by Abe Delano. So Ayersville adds under their lead now 32 6. We'll take a timeout here in WOSN. A tough break if you are a uh, Wayne Trace fan. You see uh, Brady Miller needing a little bit of help to make it to, to his sideline. Yeah, Miller was in on that attempt to get Delano down to the ground on the two-point conversion. Looks like he's got a lower lower body injury. Hopefully he gets back on the field soon. This a Wayne Trace team needs a lot of big plays moving forward to get back in this game, but you, know, you think next week when they have Paulding at home, you wonder if five and five? You know, if they lose tonight, get a win at 5-5, five and five, does that get them in still? Maybe, yeah, it's going to be tight. So. Also, uh, looks like the rain beginning to fall as well. Let's go. Well, Ayersville going to have to break out their run game for that now when it rains. Now, how impressive has this run game been for Ayersville tonight? Delano has the ball teed up. Send this one, this one hits, fielded near the 15 yard line. I'm sorry, 26 yard line. And Tyler Head, a guy that we had early in the year that Coach um, Holden was just uh, raving about his athleticism, and remember he had a, a pretty good uh, competition with Landon Brewer from uh, Antwerp. Put him on him all night long. Brewer still had some big catches, but had uh, accounted himself really well in that matchup. We'll see if the Raiders can do something in a little wet conditions now with a minute 44 to go before halftime. Down 32-6 in our carry insurance scoreboard. Stoller in the shotgun, gets the high snap. He's going to fake the run. This one's going to be fired in. Hudson Myers able to come up with the catch. He'll get into Ayersville territory, and that is enough for the State Bank first down. Yeah, very fortunate they didn't call for, get called for a legal man downfield. Some of the offensive linemen had leaked up on that RPO. 14 yards there. Quickly come out to Moorhead. Moorhead's able to get inside the 40 before he is down. Clock will continue to run here. This is why you run it to the official. And yeah, Moorhead runs it to the official. You're clocked and ready to go. You throw it over the official's head. It just costs you more time as you have to go and get the football. 
Back up a uh, gain of six on that one. Next pass is going to be incomplete. It's going to bring up third down here with a minute three to go before we get to the halftime break. Number 24 on the cover. Marysville playing off coverage, quarter coverage. Going to be tough to hit them vertical because they're giving you so much room underneath. Here's Tucker Antoine trying to get the first down, but he's going to be short. It's going to bring up fourth and about one or maybe two here with that clock running. And I see Leo Barraza come in late. To the outside linebacker to the top hand side ran around the block of Kyle Four. Made the tackle. And there's the smartest people in Ayersville right there, partner. Look at that uh, fire watching the game. Stoller looking to throw. Has Antoine open in front of him. Instead, he's going to cut up. Keeps it. He's going to have the first down. Ayersville trying to knock that one away. <laughs> and he'll get it here, and they'll stop the clock momentarily. Now, really a smart move not throwing it because all his linemen had already leaked upfield, so he'd thrown the ball. It would have been an illegal man upfield. Lex to take it and get the first down himself, and they're going to call timeout. Yeah, Raiders had uh, two timeouts remaining, so they'll have one now, I do believe. So they're going to stop it with 26 seconds to go before we get to halftime. Here, Matt Holden. You gotta start thinking, well, maybe we'll get uh, we'll get close to the 20 or 25 that Ayersville secondary will creep up and we can take a shot throw one in the end zone. And you've seen nothing but quarters coverage. Cover four, they call it, this whole drive. Gotta score, right? If you're thinking about getting back in this football game, you gotta score here with 26 seconds left. Yeah, it's gonna be Ayersville ball to begin the second half. So you're thinking you gotta score here. Still seeing the quarters coverage by Ayersville. Run a post between the two high safeties. You got a chance to pop one. See stacks each way for Stoller. Stoller trying to unload. He's going to come near side. That one nearly intercepted. That's Leo Barraza again, number seven. Second play he's made on this drive. Had the big tackle against Tucker Antoine. And this time, just on his drop zone, gets a little more vertical. Also been a catch by Hildebrand behind him. You see why they're raving about Leo. Second and 10 from just inside the 30. Stoller rolls far side, firing this one, and that's gonna be incomplete. That's gonna be Ryan again, knocking it loose. Ryan Mag playing at top side corner. Stoller leaves the pocket, tries to thread the needle right here. Ryan gonna go right through the receiver and knock it free. Just like his old man used to do, right? Yeah, up sure, but it's gonna bring up a third and 10 now, 12 seconds to go before halftime. So Ayersville might be uh, more concerned about trying to get into the end zone than converting the first down here. You're looking at two plays, Stoller looking to throw. He's grabbed by the ankle, he's gonna go down at the 35 yard line. Uh, it's going to be Eli Brewer, Burner. Eli Burner, who had a big key block a couple times in the run game. This time, he's going to make a great play. Just a rip move right underneath. Gets that right ankle of a Stoller and just chews on it to get the big quarterback to the ground. Loss of six, and Wayne Trace is going to use his final time out here with three seconds to go before halftime. I think... Uh, Maybe pretty simple what they're going to try right, to do here. Right. You better throw this thing in the end zone. Let's take a look at Andrew Mickey, who's in charge of the defense and head coach. There's Chuck Martinez helping out right there, talking about pass rushing. Uh, no doubt they're going to drop a lot of guys in coverage. Don't be surprised if they only rush three. So time for one more play for Wayne Trace. Oh, we want you to throw it into the wind as well. Raiders are going to line up here and see what they can do with three seconds to go before halftime. There's Burner, who just had the sack near side. He'll be pass rushing one on one against Caleb Mosier. Now, rushing three, going to drop eight. 
Yeah, here comes TK as well. They see everyone backing up. Stoller enough to get this one into the end zone where it's gonna be intercepted. We're gonna try to run it out, but it's not gonna matter. So it's gonna be Wolfram, they say, with the interception here. We're gonna take a look at the replay. Yeah, good job by the offensive line, keeping the quarterback Stoller free. Yeah, Wolfram, eyes on the football. You always want him to knock it down. At least they didn't tip it up in the air when someone could catch it. Wolfram got the interception, stops the drive, and what a great first half for Ayersville. Yeah, Pilots with a big lead, 32-6. to six. They lead uh, Wayne Trace at the half. We'll take a break and have the second half for you when we return. Randy and Miles back with you here at Craig McCord Field in Ayersville where the Pilots enjoy a 32-6 to six lead over Wayne Trace at the half. And partner... Pretty impressive opening half football there for uh, the Ooh. Ayersville Pilots. Yeah. They just ran the football, ran the football, ran the football, and when you were tired of it, ran the football a little more. That uh, was a complete mugging, was it, in that first half? I mean, absolute domination by Ayersville. It's a team, Randy, coming into today that he has ran for 1,520 yards, seven, TD, seven TDs, and uh, uh, 4.8 yards per carry, but it it, it was Torin Knaven last week mm -hmm. with 198 yards against Antwerp, but this week it, it's been our guy, uh, Abe Delano, who's just been absolutely semi-trucking down the highway all day long. Yeah, both of them with uh, two touchdowns each and four. Wade Trace, I don't know if there's a whole lot you can do to try to get back into this one. Well, you need points in a bunch, right? You're going to have to get some kind of score off of special teams. You're going to have to get some kind of event on defense where it's a turnover to give you the short field. You just wonder if you can do anything offensively other than the one big run by Tucker Antoine. It's been slow going offensively. And it's tough to win football games, Randy, when you're getting out physical, and that's really what's going on, right? Ayersville is just being more physical on the line of scrimmage. That run game has really dictated everything that has gone on in this football game. Man, it's going to be Ayersville ball as we begin uh, the second half here as the team's wrapping up their warm-ups, and the officials might be the uh, toughest men here today. Yeah, how about these guys? No long sleeves, no uh, winter jacket, nothing. They're showing off those biceps. You see the wind blowing their, their lower halves. It is extremely windy out there, but these guys, they're tough. And we can hear it kind of whistling through the uh, revamped press box here at Craig McCord Field. See the wind whipping around. and Well, they did a great job renovating the top part of this press box. Now pigeon and raccoon free here. Everybody that does uh, spring sports will love that. You see it right there, nice job. Yeah. Finishing it off. Can, can, here we go. Shows you our little spot in the corner. So special teams units ready to make their way onto the uh, field. Back to receive for the pilots. So really might have started about last week, but a lot more tonight and into next week where the uh, hustle to uh, get to the rest of the finals. And you begin after tonight to maybe see some of the pieces fall into place with the uh, postseason. And I'm sure Ayers will also doing a little bit of uh, left eye looking at the scoreboard in the GMC. They would love nothing more to win the, the GMC outright as opposed to having a share of it. Let's see if we can uh, maybe give them an idea of what's going on tonight. Currently we show Antwerp leading Paulding after one quarter. And Tenora leading Edgerton after one, but I'm sure those have probably been a little old. Now a little and surprise. Yeah, how about this? We talked about getting a big play in the event to get them back some momentum. And they go with the little surprise onside dribble. Looked like it was going to be covered really well by Ayersville, but bounces up in the air. And it's going to be recovered by Wayne Trace. Good work at the bottom of that pile by Jordan Lotz to come up with it. And you know, Ayersville was right after halftime telling her guys, be ready for a surprise onside. Something going on. Just came out of the hands. Wayne Trace now, opportunity at midfield. 
got to come out with some points on this drive. Well, you said they needed to make something happen. They did just that, starting at midfield here. Now, can they get something out of this? Going on the sweep to Cole Moorhead. Moorhead's going to be stopped for a loss of a yard. Yeah, it's going to be a fake inside. And then they're going to give it on the sweep around. Good Lord, look at all the powder blue jerseys just absolutely mauling them for a tackle for loss. When you don't run the ball successfully inside, nobody's going to really honor it. And therefore, all the linebackers for Ayersville just scraped over top. Second and 11 now as Wayne Trace back to their own 49. Taking their time, now getting to the line with 10 to go on the play clock. Uh, running a little option this time, trying to get this to the outside with Antoine. Antoine's gonna be pushed out of bounds near that boundary. Looks no flag here, but he's gonna get back under the Ayersville side of the field. Now you're gonna see the speed of Tucker Antoine because Jacob Miller comes flying up and he's got him one on one. But and Tucker Antoine just runs right by him. Boy, a little bit of dangerous push right there. Official could have grabbed that flag. If he's out of bounds, just let him go, right? No need to mm -hmm. get the little shove. Pick up a three on the run. Puts uh, Wayne Trace back. The other side of the stick, still third and long here, looking at about third and eight or nine. See Moorhead in motion once again. This time it's all window dressing as they go straight ahead. That's yeah, lots that's going to carry it for positive yards. And you run that because you know in, in your mind that you're already going to go for it on fourth down. So get you close. Would you be surprised if it's fourth down and go from here on out for Wayne Trace? No, I, I would believe it. Picked up three on that run, so we're going to call it fourth and about five, it looks like. Right at the 45-yard line. Offense, as Miles predicts, stay on the field. You see three receivers top side of your screen there to that far side. Looks like cover three defensively for Ayersville. Stoller looking that way. He's going to come middle of the field. A nice job hanging on to that one. A great catch by Hudson Myers. Oh, great catches. Underselling it, aren't you? And this is absolutely amazing. You want to watch one of the best catches of the weekend. Watch his body going one way, stops and reaches back over his head. I don't know how the young man came up with it. Tremendous effort, elite stuff by Hudson Myers. Picks up 15, it is enough for a State Bank first down. Back to the ground they go inside the 30 yard line. by number 58, Brady Clark. Gain of about two on the run. Picking up the tempo a little bit on offense for Wayne Trace. Showing some life, of course a great catch by Hudson Myers. Keeps this thing going. And you see him looking over at the sideline, getting the call in. See what Matt Holden, head coach and play caller, he just signaled a double bicep flex. So whatever that is. It's got to work. <laughs> Channeling his inner Hulk Hogan over there on the sideline. He is Tucker Antoine with it. Trying to cut up field. Got a flag coming in here on this one. Let's see what the call is. Yeah, this is going to be your everyday garden variety. Being a little too creative with your hands, I think they're going to call it on Hildebrand. This is going to be a hold. It was. I usually try to take up for the guys on the line of scrimmage, but, yeah, this is no doubt about it. So that will back up the Raiders a little bit. See them still being kind of deliberate. Is this more making sure they get exactly what they want, trying to get a play in? instead of trying to go hurry and get a little sloppy. Well, I thought at first uh, that Ayersville was going to decline the penalty, but no, take that yardage, right? Yeah, second down and long now. Yeah, just deliberate because you didn't have to get to the line of scrimmage because the officials were trying to figure out where the ball would be spotted. So that gives you a little extra time. Second and 18 now, back at the 38. Stoller looking to throw. He's going to step up, fires in traffic. This one's caught back near the 30-yard line. Going back to his favorite target tonight, oh, Hudson pass. Myers, the senior. The number seven is complete. Mark that at the 31. We'll give him seven on the seven game. It's going to bring up third and about 11. Yeah, yeah, let's go way back in our pregame when we talked about Ayersville's uh, keys or tips to the game. At number one, you know, find receivers in the zone. And right now, Hudson Myers is just running free. Got to get your hands on him if you're Ayersville. 
Stoller with the uh, fake. And looks like no one is buying it. And Ayersville. Check that wing trace might have jumped offside. A little flinch out of someone. It's really kind of odd because everybody was in a two-point stance, including the offensive lineman. So really no reason to flinch. Hold your water up front. Third and 11 turns into third and 16. The wind continues to whip around. Yeah, trips to the wide side. You see Coach Holden there on the corner of your screen and the red jacket signaling in what he wanted called. Stoller looking to throw again, has room. He's kind of directing traffic. Rolls out to that far side. He's going to fire this one short. Thrown at the feet of Brady Miller. It's going to be incomplete. Uh, he's going to take a great shot by Knaven on the sideline right here. Stoller trying to direct traffic, getting over to the sideline. You know, watch uh, number 44 show up right there late. Get a hit on him on the sideline, and Stoller was slow to get up on the sideline, but he's all right now. Check that was uh, Hildebrand he was throwing to and not Miller. Come on, boys. Fourth and uh, about 16 coming up here. Imagine down 32 to 6. Offense will stay on the field. Try to stay in the pocket if you're Stoller. When you roll, it shrinks the field, and the receivers, when they come back to you, run out of field. Snap comes just in time. Stoller going to oh. unload. Throwing this one deep downfield, and it's going to be incomplete. Looking for more head in the end zone. We do have a flag down. It's kind of a slant, and then he's going to go right up the seam. I think if he throws it right there, he's got the touchdown. Holds on it to a little bit too long. Moorhead is going to have a touchdown, but you see, oh, just a little bit too early. Jacob Myler getting a little handsy. Official easy call on the spot. Yeah, just a little bit of a grab, the pass interference. It is not enough for a first down. It's going to be fourth and about one. Yeah, a little bit different. That's not an automatic first down here in high school. Kind of glad that it's not. What about you? I agree. Worst thing they could ever do, though, is allow <laughs> NFL rules for interference in high school. In oh, it would be brutal. Uh, it would be tough to watch. Come on. Wayne Trace helped out with a pass interference. Now we're going to have fourth and one from the 21-yard line. It should be Antoine on a handoff. Stoller looks at the sideline, once again trying to fake out Ayersville. They're not biting. Stoller now the snap. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to take a hit. Oh, we got all sorts of things going on. I believe an official thought that was a flag at first, but that was a marker because the ball came loose. Uh, they're going to run speed option. And Stoller's just going to tuck it and try to get under. But look at the man, the king. Number 58, Brady Clark scraping over top. Nobody reaches him, causes the fumble, and just absolutely obliterates Wayne Trace's hopes for a score on this drive. So the fumble and the recovery, the, the loss on the play, all combine for a loss of downs. Ayersville will take over. Their own 23 with 8.22 to go. Interesting call, the speed option on fourth down and one. See those split backs in the backfield once again, Mike seeing more of uh, Delano and can even with it. That's Mosier, number 50, making the tackle for Wayne Trace. They found something late in that first half. It went with that four and five down line front, tried to take away the inside run game for Ayersville. The run game for Ayersville, absolutely dominant, but we talked at halftime, you and I, A and mm -hmm. B gap dominant, right? Yeah. Not a lot outside, so if you, you load up that box inside, force them to go towards the sideline, you have a little bit better chance, and that's what Wayne Trace is trying to do. Second and six coming up here for the uh, Pilots. See the man going back in motion. Delano with it, trying to break to the outside. Wayne Trace, better job with a defense stretching that out. Delano's going to go down for a loss. Back-to-back yeah, -back plays by Mosier, number 50. You're going to see him top side, fights off the block of Clark that time, comes down the line of scrimmage, and you know you're strong when you bring down Abe Delano with one arm. And Mosier just looks like a big body out there, senior 6'5", 240. 
Yeah, yeah, he's one of those guys when you visit Wayne Trace at practice, you're like, who's that guy? <laughs> he sticks he, out, right? He, he does. He's a left tackle for them. Loss of two on the run. It's going to bring up a third and eight. Rain now beginning to hit our window here in the press box. So looking to throw, coming here to the sideline. Nearly had it. It's going to be incomplete looking for Ray Wolfram. A good throw by Fishball. He's going to take a shot as he delivers it. A little bit of a push off on head to get the separation, but remember, Pinch and press was the number one of our keys. Wayne Trace, they pinched up front. <laughs> Look at the umbrellas flying around. Well, that rain and wind, a bad combination, right? So pinch and press, that time they had to press coverage outside, won that battle. I do believe first time three and out on the evening for Ayersville. I believe you are correct. Punt underway, good punt. This one is going to be... Taken at about the 32, no fair catch called, but the um, return man for Wayne Trays, I believe, was Jude Stoller. Went down to a knee to field it, so he will be downed right there by, say by contact. But high school, it's just your knees down, you're down. Now you saw Stoller kind of panicked, right? That mo ball moved at the last second on him. Great job by him to be able to corral that one. Last thing Wayne Trace needed was yet another costly turnover to set Ayersville up. Uh, Raiders going to have this at their own 32. 640 left to go in the third quarter on the scoreboard tonight, brought to you by Carry Insurance in Grover Hill. Call or stop by so we can assist you with all of your insurance needs. Now we see that split back look that Ayersville has done a lot tonight, mirrored out of the Raiders. And of motion, everything else going on. The Raiders want to take a timeout. So the timeout on the field will take one as well here in the third quarter. Oh, Wayne Trace breaking the huddle once again to uh, take a timeout, get set. Had a lot of movement trying to figure out what they're doing here. Handoff is going to go on the first down. They're going to go to Tucker Antoine. Tackle by number 58, Brady Clark. Well, if Wayne Trace thinks they're going to get back in this game by running the football, which you have to do a little bit, right? You can't just throw every single down. Mm -hmm. They've got to reach number 58, right? Brady Clark has been an absolute nightmare for them. He is absolutely running through every block. Here you see him faking that he's going to come on a blitz. Game of two on the run is going to bring up second and eight. And now they change it up here going with Jordan Lotz. Lotz. Out across the 40s, close to the State Bank first down. Looks like he'll be just a little short. A good block by four up front, getting the block 58 right there. They earn the space, and a really good job by Luke Stouffer, the center, number 78. Gain of seven on the run. It's going to bring up third and one. Back to Antoine. Antoine able to there cut this up field. Runs out of one tackle. He's in Ayersville territory. Still on his feet. Finally, he's going to be brought down at about the 38-yard line. No, he's fun to watch, isn't he? Had the big run for a touchdown in the first half. That time, more of the creative type of run. And Wayne Trace getting on the line of scrimmage. 21 yards on that last run. Antoine will get it again. Gets to about the 35. So give him about three more. Swing Trace showing a little bit with uh, some tempo here. Yeah, went back to the same play that they just popped. Myler missed a tackle a moment ago. This time he comes up to the line of scrimmage, holds him to a three-yard tackle. Make a change in the personnel here as Wayne Trace got to the line, looked to the sideline, and then decides to huddle here. Break the huddle with uh, 16 on the play clock. Stoller in that shotgun, a pair of backs, single receiver each way. And now runs the option pitch here. Let's get it over to Tyler Head. Head able to get this inside the 35. See where they mark him down at. A good fake inside. Stoller's going to pay for it, gets the pitch, but Myler comes flying up. Nobody there to account for Myler. So he's going to have to come up. You need your running back to beat the secondary member for extra yardage. Myler was up to the task that time. Gain of two on the run is going to bring up third and five from the 33-yard line. 
Split backs in the backfield uh, once again. Stoller in a shotgun. Fakes it, has a man coming right at him. Able to run out of pressure, still on his feet, trying to find something. Gets to the sideline and finally is going to be helped out of bounds, but it looks like it's going to be for a loss back at the 35-yard line. Uh, Stoller is just dead to rights in the, in the backfield, but this is a veteran move, something Ben Roethlisberger used to do all the time. Just spin out of it, let the defender run by, right by you. And that is Garrett McConnell that had the sack in the backfield, but Stoller so strong gets it out of the way. Yeah, they're going to lose a yard to the 34. A fourth down coming up again here. Clock stopped momentarily on our uh, carry insurance scoreboard. 4.33 to go. So we'll run on the, stamp, uh, on the snap with Stoller going out of bounds. It's fourth down. McConnell trying to uh, get him down again to two receivers in the same spot. This pass is going to be caught. It's Tucker Antoine comes up with it and a big State Bank first down. Uh, Tucker Antoine in the backfield. He's just going to run an arrow right between the two safeties. It was a two so high safety look. And nobody in the middle of the safeties had vacated outside the hash. That was a great catch. A little bit better throw by Stoller, and he's in the end zone. We'll mark that just inside the 10-yard line. First and goal. We'll call it the nine. So 25 yards on the reception there. And another State Bank first down. Contact the State Bank for all of your financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. And Wayne Trace will get in for the Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown as lots will score from nine yards out. Look at nobody there at the play side. Four gets a great block to spring him. And number 50, Caleb Mosier. Mosey's into the end zone and lets his running back, Lots, follow the way for the touchdown. So Lotz will score from nine yards out. And the Raiders will go for two here, just under four to go in the third quarter. Yeah, really for the first time tonight, winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, Wayne Trace up front with their offensive line. Stoller looking to throw, and that one is going to be pulled in in the back of the end zone. And the two point will be good. Is that Hildebrand with it, number eight? Yeah, it's going to be Hildebrand who leads the team with receptions coming into the, tonight with 28, but only averages seven yards every time he catches it. Well, no need to get big yardage when all you need is two for the two point. Easy pitch and catch. Excellent fake by Stoller inside to get his tight end free. Oh, Wayne Trey scores. May they uh, now cut it to 32 14. We'll take a break here on WOSM. I will see what Wayne Trace will do here. They had a successful onside kick to begin the second half. See what they can do here. Raiders find themselves down 32-14 as we get to the latter stages of this Better get on it. third quarter. And I'm not quite sure what Ayersville was trying to do. They think that was going to roll all the way into the end zone? I think they just had more time to fall on that. Yeah, kind of weird play, wasn't it? Guys looking around like, what are we going to do with that ball driving by us? This is going to be terrible starting position for Ayersville. Now, this is a game that at halftime looked like it was going to be a laugher, but Wayne Trace has come out and played really well in the second half. Now terrible field position. Wayne Trace gets a three and out again, scores right by before the fourth quarter. Oh, then things might start really feeling tight for Ayersville. And Pilots going to start this drive with their own 13. You see there 3.56 to go in the quarter in our carry insurance scoreboard. Split backs again for Fishpaw. Kenevan's going to run straight ahead. He'll have uh, good yardage there on first down. Really the first time that Ayersville's handled that five down look for Wayne Trace effectively. Went back to their staple. Going to block down and pull around on the counter. Uh, seems like Naven's favorite uh, run play. Pick up seven on that first down run, second and short, just outside the 20-yard line. Tight look once again. There's Delano. Delano works that left side. Looks like he'll have enough for the State Bank first down. That brings up a pilot first down. Now you wonder, moving forward, thinking about in the playoffs, right? This Ayersville team going to be there. Uh, they 12, get a little bit deep in the playoffs. They're going to run up against teams that are physically as well as imposing as them mm -hmm. on the line of scrimmage. 
do you have stuff that gets you to the perimeter to make defenses pay for that, no, no, right? No, that's a good question. I mean, they're impressive with their inside run game, but at some point in time, you've got to stretch the defense to the sideline. First down from the 24. Can even with this one, we'll get to the other side of the 25 across to the 26. We'll give him about two. Yeah, Mosier made a difference for Wayne Trace on the inside, playing over top to center. Another tackle for him, third tackle in this half against the run game. Second down and about eight coming up here. So for Ayersville, you're looking maybe around a 10 seat or so. And now we got movement up front. That's amazing how many times in football when you've gone on hut and all of a sudden you say, let's go on hut, hut. That first hut gets the defensive line to jump, especially the guy that is lined up over top to center. They're gonna entice Luke Stouffer to jump off side and five free yards for Ayersville when Wayne Trace really had him kind of in a bad spot. Like second down a little bit shorter. Here we go. Here's Kinevan once again, straight up the middle and he's gonna be brought down from behind by Jude Stoller, but not after a big run. Yeah, looking like another 44 that was famous for the Washington Redskins, John Riggins. Just tremendous point of attack blocking, and then he's going to get on the secondary in a hurry. Stoller makes yet another touchdown saving tackle for Wayne Trace. 43 yards there. It's a first down, a State Bank first down at the Wayne Trace 26 yard line. And now again, a changing places for Ayersville as Garrett McConnell has done a nice job as the H-back tight end will get a look. And just a freshman, a little fire plug getting the football right there. Imagine they'll probably slide in that slot that will be vacated by Delano next year. Knaven will be back. I wonder if that freshman will be alongside him in the backfield next year. I would think so. Picked up six there, it's gonna bring up second and four. See a single receiver split out each way. That play clock down under five, that's when the snap comes. And they go back to Keneven, Keneven get inside the 15, that'll be enough for yet another State Bank first down. A smart play by Fishpaw. That brings up you know, a never can, when you have a big lead, you can never milk the clock early enough. You see him coming over, getting the play call from Brandon Bingfeld, the offensive coordinator, going over there. Of course, it's easier nowadays when you have the play clock in the end zones for the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Pilots will have to run one more play before we get to the end of the quarter. Wayne Trace nearly caught jumping again. Go back to Kneven, I believe. Kineven and he'll get about a yard. And by the time they unpile the bodies, that's going to do it for three quarters. And Ayersville still in front, threatening to add on to their lead. Ayersville lining up for a second down and nine as the Pilots lead 32-14. We move uh, into the fourth quarter. You see our uh, scoreboard uh, brought to you by Carey Insurance. And here's Kineven. Uh, <laughs> trying to fight for that end zone. And just lost his footing and he knew it. Nick, how blew a tire, didn't he? He's going to see it right here. Look at Brady Clark, though, just leading the way, pushing his guy five yards upfield and just... You normally you run through a, a, a tackle like that, but uh, Amos uh, Sin able to get him to the ground. Yeah, can even the man down as he also took a shot there from Jude Stoller at the end of that one. So looks like trainers are going to take a look at the injured player. While they do, we'll take a break here in WOSN. Uh, absolutely a heartbreaking way for the uh, night to end for uh, Torin Kenevan, the junior running back for Ayersville Partners. Had an outstanding night, a couple of touchdown runs couple of two-point conversions and didn't see anything 
we uh, took a look at the uh, replay during the break now. Players from both teams had come out and look at it. Looked like they had uh, uh, a knee injury. Had to put them on the uh, backboard, and they're going to load them up onto the uh, cart, get them uh, off the field. But uh, unfortunate night for the way that young man's uh, night's going to end. And presumably the way that they handled him with care, I'm going to guess the end of his uh, season tonight as well. Well, let's hope not, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times they just do all that stuff for precaution. The replay that we had, it looked like the right leg kind of gave way, almost a hyperextended. Sometimes that, that will tear, tear ligaments, and you see them, they got them on that board. And, and uh, absolutely horrible scene. You never want to see an athlete, anyone in that position. Uh, great sportsmanship by the guys from Wayne Trace. And, of course, his teammates went over there right away. Uh, it just shows you the uh, – respect for a, a great player like him and a, another fantastic night over 150 yards and a couple of TDs and two point con, conversions but uh, absolutely heartbreaking watching that young man uh, going off on the cart. Yeah, see if we can take a look at uh, the replay if we can of uh, that last run. I believe the officials are going to give everyone yeah, a couple of minutes. They were uh, unfortunately standing around so Kenevan's going to be the one on the carry here. Number 44 and it won't happen until the uh, end of the play here. And you know, Miles kind of pointed it out. You see him kind of plant that leg at the end of this. He's going to lunge forward. And you see the uh, leg kind of uh, twist a little bit. You think maybe that was uh, part of the uh, knee injury. Hey, you watch his body language. He knew right away when he hit the ground, dropped the football. And, you know, you don't want to play amateur doctor, but it definitely looked like something to do with the right leg. Now hopefully it was just one of those situations where he hyperextended it and scared him. Uh, hopefully no ligament damage right there because he is one fun football player to watch. So I don't know exactly how long the officials are going to give the players. So Miles was telling us situations like this. It could be about five minutes or so. So while uh, the players are going to warm back up again, we still have a fourth quarter to play. We'll take another break here on WOSN. It looks like we are uh, ready for a play to resume here. So 11.50 to go. Fourth quarter, it's going to be third and about two coming up for the uh, pilots here. And I believe they're going to reset the play clock, have everything set. And it looks like we are going to be good to go. I got man-to-man -man outside if they want to, but I think they don't. They're just going to run the football here, I think. See that shotgun look. Here's Delano powering forward. And they're going to believe the officials are going to mark them down shy of the goal line. A good job by the interior line, especially number 52, Cordaway. Watch him just drive, drive, and drive again. That's a lot of beef in front of Delano. And, of course, Delano's got a lot of beef also. State Bank first down from the one. Delano trying to move forward. Didn't have that far to go. Still going to mark him short, so say no gain on the play. Caleb Mosier going to come from behind, get him to the ground. Just barely held him, held him out of the end zone. Look like they're going to spot it inside the one-yard line. Don't think there's going to be a lot of fancy play calling here for the Pilots on second and goal from inside the one. Still in that shotgun look. We see that Garrett McConnell is taking over now. Fumbled snap. Fishpaw. It's one of his one of his linemen kind of pushing. I don't know if he's trying to keep him out of trouble. I thought the ball was still loose here. It's kind of a weird look. Yeah, he's gonna get contacted. And does he try to give it to Lano right there? Yeah, that, that yeah. was exactly what it was. Yeah, you take it. Nope. I don't want to get hit. You go ahead and get hit. That's the problem with the shotgun though, right? Yeah, you run shotgun, you're gonna have at least one snap a game where it's bad. You at first and goal at the half-yard line. What's wrong with going under the center? What's wrong with the quarterback sneak? I say it every week. Come on, coaches, let's not overthink things. Loss of a four on the play. It's going to bring up third and goal now from the five. See those two backs in the shotgun. They're going to throw out of this. Fishpaw looking. Had a receiver might have slipped out, and that helped him get open. And we'll get a touchdown. And it's a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown as Jacob Myler tried to get his feet under him to celebrate. Now let's take a look at the route. He just kind of comes out and pushes his head off of him and then goes to the pylon. A little different way to throw the fade. And so the back corner 
You throw it to the front pylon. Great physicality by Myler to get the separation on head. And are we going to see an extra point tonight? Delano, three of six on the year. Gonna get that one, and that's gonna get right into the belly of the line. So the kick is no good, but Ayersville able to add on to their lead. They do it through the air for the first time tonight. So now 38-14, Ayersville in front of Wake Trace will take a break here in WOSN. Just a reminder. 9.53 left to play here on our carry insurance scoreboard. Now 38-14. Ayersville in front of Wayne Trace. Jacob Myler hauls in the five-yard pass the from Stoller, Lucas Fishpaw to add on to that lead. Abe Delano back to kick for the Pilots. So Delano set to kick this one off. It's a good end-over-end -end kick. This one will be fielded. Near the 10 yard line, I believe it's Hudson Myers again, trying to get to the outside. And he'll be brought down just past the 25. You can tell that uh, top player a little slick out there. You see multiple players having some problems with some footing. Well, scores on out of hand, but the effort is still there for some of the guys on Wayne Trace. Tyler Head it just was beat a moment ago in the, in the touchdown in the end zone. But on that kickoff return, buddy, he took his man and drove him into that Ayersville sideline right in front of Andrew Mickey, the head coach of Ayersville. And you know what he did? He got up and patted him on the helmet and said, that's a good job, that's a way to block. Andrew Mickey loves physical football. Yes, he does. Raiders are gonna start at their own 27 here with the 9.46 to go. See single receiver each way. Stoller looking to throw, setting up that tunnel screen. This one is caught, here's Moorhead. Moorhead! Now it's a foot race as he gets in Ayersville territory down that far sideline. The 20, the 10, and he's going to get in for the Leland Smith Insurance Stoller's Services touchdown. To yeah, Cole Moore had just going to run the tunnel screen. They ran it in the first half to no success. He's going to make one guy miss, and it's going to be Clark right there. Makes another guy miss. And then all of a sudden, it's going to be a race, as you said, partner, to the end zone. I wonder who wins the race between Tucker, Antoine, and Moorhead. Who do you think wins that one? Well, it doesn't matter because they both result in six. Moorhead, big time play for Wayne Trace. So Moorhead, 73 yards on the catch and run. So the answer for the 12 play drive for Ayersville is a quick one play drive. And now it is the Raiders who are going to attempt an extra point. That one is going to be good as Winans has the extra point. And it's back to 38 to 20. And we'll take another timeout here on WOSN. Well, if you feel like you've uh, watched this before, it's because you have uh, apparently a timeout called before the uh, extra point snap. So Wayne Trace changing their mind. Going for two, the two point is going to be no good. And so they took what would have been the extra point off the board. So we do go 38 20 now with nine and a half minutes to play. Uh, see if we can uh, kill some time here, partner. Yeah, interesting that you call timeout right before, right before the kick, and then you make the kick and come out and go for two. Not sure, you know, playing the numbers. Well, try, yeah, trying to do yeah. some math. You realize 38-21, you get a two point. 38-22 right. makes it uh, two possessions, two touchdowns, two two points. Doable with a nine and a half minutes to play. Right, but to waste the time out there. Right? Yeah, yeah you, that's you, the you, one. You have, every coach has that card, or you have a guy in the booth that has the card, and it tells you, Coach, uh, it's at this number. We need to go for two here as opposed to, to kicking it off or uh, kicking the extra point. So you, you don't get the two point and you waste the time out. You make things a little more difficult than they should be. Well, Ayersville has got uh, the hands team, the backs and receivers. Now the officials are still huddled back at the uh, five yard line where the uh, two point play was run from. So we finally have uh, gotten a break there. So it's been a crazy night. You've seen a little bit of everything here at Craig McCord Field. Craig McCord, longtime uh, coach here at Ayersville, started the uh, football program in the mid-70s. Yeah, came back. 
and coached again, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you see the all the bodies up for Ayersville, expecting onside kick by Wayne Trace. Hands team is what they're calling. And deepest uh, men are at the uh, 35, so they're expecting something short. Did you send at least one guy deep in case they kick it? I mean, is there a possibility you kick it deep to try to outrun yeah, everyone? Yeah, you always had one really fast guy back deep in case of that, and then you tell him to get as many yards as possible, then take a knee. That's exactly what uh, Wayne Trace tries to do, looking for the corner, and a good job on that special Big team from Wayne the Trace. The They're going to pin Ayersville in deep. Yeah, Tyler Head. He delivered uh, some contact on Myler. He said, hey, Myler, I remember when you beat me for the touchdown. I'm going to make you pay here out in the open field. So one, Wayne Trace has one timeout now. That is what is showing on uh, the scoreboard. Okay. Not our carry insurance scoreboard, but we're not sure which one. There's been timeouts called when we weren't aware, like they had on that kick. So... I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I do know Ayersville has the football back at their own 10 with 9.27 to play. Back to that ground game. Here is McConnell, the freshman. And he's going to get out across the 15. Well, if you want to be able to run a counter play, you better have great blocking at the point of attack. And you know, they sure have it. Ethan Cordaway. Just Cordaway just does a great job of mauling people. Number 52, 6'2", 270 pounds, the senior. Sealing the edge on this offensive line on the left-hand side and then allows his guys to pull around on the counter. Pickup of a six on the run is going to bring up second and four. Delano with this one, he's going to get out across the 20. And he'll have the State Bank first down. Dave Delano on the run. They're going to be a little Nobody bit short. My here. apologies. Looked like he had skidded across the 20 yard line, but they're going to say the knee. Well, they're going to mark it right at the 20, which should have been enough for starting from the 10. Well, if you, well, they have it at about the 10 and a half. If you look at the top of the screen, the guy holding a chain. Let's put extra link in it at some point. Third and inside of a yard from what looks to be the 20-yard line. So Fishpaw will just get it. And now we can say they'll have the State Bank first down. Yeah, seven men on the line of scrimmage for Wayne Trace. All gaps filled, doesn't matter. The big fellas up front for Ayersville getting things done. This first down here comes with about eight minutes to play. Saw, again, that uh, opening drive of the night. Ayersville took 14 plays, went from their own 25 to the Wayne Trace 9 before losing it on downs. But they took about uh, just shy of nine minutes off the clock. They'd love to have the same thing here and wrap up this one. Delano moving forward again. He'll hey, get Delano maybe a yard. Uh, guys that you don't normally talk about in the course of a game, but so vital. And the dominance of this offensive line, we should, probably should mention all of them. Cordaway at left tackle, Clark at left at guard, Florence and McConnell mixing in at center, Bodie at right at guard, and Caden Boer, number 68 at right tackle. Big fellas. You know, live anon anonymously a lot of times, but when you have a night like this, when you're dominating the line of scrimmage, you should get called out. Second and nine coming up here. As Ayersville looks at that play clock that right now rolls under five. Fakes to the first man through. Instead, it is McConnell. McConnell's going to bounce off one would-be tackler. And finally, will be brought down at about the 30-yard line. Now, he doesn't look like a freshman when he's carrying the football, does he? Does not. Yeah, he's got some serious physicality to him. Even dragging guys for extra yards. Third and two. Picks up seven on that run to bring up a third and short. We'll say third and roughly two yards. Ayersville breaks the huddle with 15 on the play clock, and then you see them kind of stand over the football. They're, they are in no hurry. Third and short. There's that play straight ahead. Delano to come out of the pile ahead, and he will motor his way for another State Bank first down. 
it's going to be Connor Blankenship that's going to grab the ankle or else Delano is still getting some more yards. Not sure he's going to stride it out for a touchdown, but he was going to take that diesel, the semi, all that stuff that's in the back, going to deliver it. He is a load on the highway, Abe Delano. Picked up 13 on that carry. They wait, and now McConnell works that right side. Now flags coming in at the end of this play. Heard him talking yeah, about McConnell the stats there. The Delano now 154 yards on the night. The semi truck has just been cruising. This time it's going to be the freshman going to get some yards, but finally they're going to get a holding call, I believe. And I've been on the opposite end when I'm calling defense, and they're just running for all kinds of yardage. Yeah. The oh, it's going to be a face mask. So needed the face mask to bring him down. But your defensive coordinator and the team's run for nearly 300 yards on you, and they finally call a hold in the fourth quarter when the game's out of reach. <laughs> you just kind of chuckle. Like, now you call the hold penalty, but this is going to be a face mask instead. So we're going to get the yardage to the uh, inside the uh, for, uh, 45, and then they walk off 15 yards. I know what I'm trying to say here. We do know that Ayersville's down to the Wayne Trace 38 now. What's up with the clock? 32 seconds. <laughs> And it's just a night of playing keep away here for this final five plus minutes. Uh, Ayersville will host Fairview next week in week 10. It's a Fairview team that's a little bit dangerous. They can pour, score some points. Hasn't had a ton of wins this year, but yeah, they score points with everybody. Gave Wayne Trace a battle last week. Well, Myler to the outside is gonna get this one. And the worst part of that play if you're an Ayersville fan is he got out of bounds. They're going to fake inside on the counter, throw the bubble screen outside. Myler, a little elusiveness, gets himself free. He says, you know what, I don't like the media. Going to take out a camera as he does it. That is not a WOSN camera, thankfully. Ken Reeker, he can be all right now. It's not one of ours. <laughs> I picked up 14 there. You're talking about Wayne Trace, or um, Fairview. Fairview got uh, a big win tonight as they actually got a uh, shutout of Hicksville, 35 to nothing. Oh. Ball on the ground. Ball's going to come loose. It's going to be picked up, and we're going the other way. Moorhead with this one. No one around him, and he's going to get into the end zone, and Moorhead is going to go at about 71 yards, I think, 71-72 on the fumble recovery. Uh, just a bad exchange. Remember, you got a freshman in there. Doesn't get the football. The quarterback Fishball kind of put it on his thigh pad. Next thing you know, it's on the ground. And Moorhead, nobody going to catch him except for maybe Tucker Antoine, and he doesn't play for Ayersville. You go for two here, don't you, partner, to make it a 10-point game? I think so. I think that's... The idea is. Touchdown scored by number 12, Cole Moorhead. Boy, suddenly panic creeps into the thought process for the Ayersville faithful. Remember, this is a team that uh, looked like they had Tenora beaten, and Tenora came back and snagged one from them. Well, we ain't Trey selecting the hold off for two until they absolutely have to. They'll kick the extra point here as Winans will knock Hello, that one through. Now we will hold on a minute, make sure there's no timeout called. <laughs> but it looks like it's good. So Winans gets the extra point. Suddenly, that Ayersville lead has been trimmed to 11, and we'll take a break here on WOSN. 38-27, Ayersville now leads Wayne Trace. But how about uh, the play there, the last couple of touchdowns here. Cole Moorhead, the 73-yard uh, Catch and run, the 70 plus yard scoop and score. A good shot of the Wayne Trace band a second ago. Had one of the most creative halftime shows, right? Trace Jurassic Park. Yeah, they, had the uh, movie night with yeah. the uh, two Jurassic Park, a part of that, the two dinosaurs 
the uh, battling it to the end. Not the two dinosaurs from PSAs that uh, you're familiar with, but at the same time, it was still pretty cool. They had a little battle. I think the Red T-Rex won it. That was fun. Well, the Raiders still uh, hanging around here. It was tough, though, at halftime explaining to Randy Roberts that there was actually people inside those costumes. They I thought those were real dinosaurs. Those were not real dinosaurs at halftime. That they didn't find the DNA. Kept kept in the sap of the trees. The onside kick here. Mm -hmm. Kick it away. Be kicked away. And this one is going to bounce and roll. That one is going to die just shy of the goal line. Yes. Here's we'll get this one out across the 10 or so. All right, no need to panic if you're Ayersville, if you're Andrew Mickey, the head coach, you tell your guys, look, if we take care of the football from here, we're going to win this football game. We have to do bad things, and they have to do a lot of things right for them to steal this thing. You know, sometimes when something like that happens, you guys kind of panic and you get those wide eyes on the sideline. Just settle them down, remember. Mm -hmm. We still run the. We still control the line of scrimmage. Let's run the football and win this game. It's time for the pilots to start from their ten with a, or twelve. Excuse me, four and a half minutes to play in our carry insurance scoreboard. So McConnell will get this one out to about the fifteen. Here McConnell on the run. Interesting that they went back to the same exchange, right? It was a fumble last time the two ran it, yeah, but this time uh, the proper handoff gets done by Fishpaw and McConnell. I like it. You know, you're saying to the freshman, hey, take care of the football. He didn't take care of it last time. you got to learn to take care of it here. Second and seven coming up from the 15. The Pilots go back to McConnell. He'll get another solid gain here of about five more getting to the 20. I think Delano carries it from here on out or maybe Fishpaw if I'm Ayersville. You, know, you want it in a, a veteran hand. Mm -hmm. No miracle of the Meadowlands like Herm Edwards <laughs> scooping and scoring. Third and about two coming up here for Ayersville. Need to convert this one, and it looks like maybe about one more and try to salt this one away. Wayne Trace can only stop the clock one more time. Fishpaw with it. It is Delano. Delano trying to move that pile. I don't think he got it. And he is, I think, going to be short. Tucker Antoine comes out of the pile with the football. Yeah, he's going to be short right there. Good job by Wayne Trace playing low pad level. And Watch Tucker Antoine come out the bottom of the pile with the football, but I think they already whistled it. Yeah, down. everyone was stopped and not moving. See the Wayne Trace coaches thinking their guys have it here. That's Austin Spies, and that's our football. My defense came up with a big play. The last timeout, I believe, by Wayne Trace here. Yes. So the Raiders have used their final timeout. They're going to force Ayersville to make a decision. Fourth and one. Ayersville has it, their own 21-yard line. Seeing our carry insurance scoreboard, two, or you don't, but I can tell you there's 241 left to play. So if you're Ayersville, do you trust yourself in getting the yard? And putting this one away, or do you punt the football away? Well, they're talking to him as if they are going to go for it. Usually not that intense in a huddle if you're going to punt the football, right? Uh, looks like they've decided they're going to go for it right here on fourth down and one. Oh, Ayersville snacking on some danger if they're going to go with it. Let's see what will happen. Ayersville leaving their offense on the field. They will huddle. This isn't one of those things, Wayne Trace, with that final timeout being used, not exactly like you can take a look at it and call a timeout. It might be they're trying to draw. They're going to try and draw them and call timeout. If they snap it here. I don't like that. Yeah, good move. That is exactly what they're going to do. So now Ayersville will the use the first of its allotted three stoppages. Yeah, I do believe you see some of the punt team guys going out onto the field. 
Uh, so one of the mistakes coaches make, right, when you're going to go ahead and say, well, we're going to try and draw them. If we don't draw them, we'll still stamp it. Never like that because your offensive line can get up to the line of scrimmage and they can sit and they sit and they sit, right? And then you snap the ball because they didn't jump. And next thing you know, defensive line is ready for it. If you're going to go for it in fourth down, always go quickly because your guys are excited on the line mm -hmm. of scrimmage. You're like a cannon in a cannon, a cannonball in a cannon. You want, <laughs> so you you want to shoot out. Cannon, you're like a cannon in a cannon shop. <laughs> Where is that cannon yeah, shop at? Know. It's been one of those types of nights, folks. We've had ourselves a little bit of everything here. Yeah, here comes the punt team. I like it. Tried to get him to draw, didn't. Let's punt the football. No need to not get it on fourth down and give Wayne Trace some more hope. So uh, Delano will do the punting. It's going to be Stoller back deep. Do not kick it to him. He's got some electricity in his feet. Second time Ayersville's had to punt the football tonight. This one is sent away, and it is going to be fielded as apparently the – I didn't see the hand go up above the head, but apparently enough of a movement for a fair catch to be called. Well, you mind your offense when they're coming out. We're out of timeout, so you want to get to the line of scrimmage as quickly as possible. Coach – Holden can really help his offense out, though, by not changing formations from play to play. You waste a lot of time when you go from, like, trips to a spread look. Guys got to move around. Stay in the same set, and let's go quickly. So the Raiders have it at their own 48 to 35 to go. They're going to need a touchdown and a field goal yet. Three receivers come to the near side, one to the far side. Stoller in a shotgun. Look in. Plenty of time. He's going to fire this one short. Pass is caught. Trying to get out of bounds is Hudson Meyer. Oh, they're going to wind it. Do it. Yep, they're going to wind it here. That's tough. Got to go quickly now. You see Stollard wanting to go deep. Everybody for Ayersville playing off coverage. Meyer's going to get caught in bounds. It's a pickup of eight. It's going to bring up second and two. And now Ayersville is going to help out Wayne Trace and call the timeout. Yeah, must have not had the secondary aligned correctly. Get that timeout. The last thing you want is a Wayne Trace receiver to run by a guy. So the defense for uh, Ayersville talking it out. Last thing you want to do is have something get blown here. Really open the door for Wayne Trace. Now they've been playing quarters coverage most of the night in these types of situations. Don't do something that's going to change that. And you see him telling everybody, keep everything in front of you. Coach Mickey does a great job with that defense. Nope. Sends his defense back out onto the field here. Second and two. Coming up. Clock right now at 2-11. Stoller has three receivers to the near side, one to that far side. Looked at his bench for a moment. Now he's trying to get everything set. Gets the snap. Comes, has a man open again. It is Hudson Myers. Myers able to get out of bounds. He'll get that uh, State Bank first down at about the 35-yard line. A smart decision getting it to Myers early so he gets some positive yards and then get to the sideline. That is a throw that will be there as Ayersville playing way off in the secondary. Picked up a nine. Coming back once again with that three-receiver look this time to the far side. Stoller looking middle of the field. Now he's going to unload, and he's going to overshoot everyone. Incomplete, looking for Tucker Antoine, that near sideline. They kind of forced something that wasn't there. Stoller saw him get by the initial defender, but didn't see a defensive back playing the deep third behind it. Good discipline by the secondary of Ayersville. It's going to bring up second and 10 with Wayne Trace at the Ayersville 35. Stoller in the shotgun, a little bit more pressure this time. Feels it, trying to get rid of this one, throws it into traffic, and that's going to be caught in that far sideline. <laughs> Guess who? Cole Moorhead. He's going to bail out Stoller right here. He's going to be sacked for a huge loss. I don't know how Stoller even threw it. 
get the 21 yards down to the 14. Stoller rolling out again, has another open receiver. This is Myers again, has to trap that against his thigh, but he's able to get out of bounds. And they're gonna mark this just inside the 10. They got the official at about the 10 yard line, so we're gonna call it at the 10 yard line. Gain of about four, second and six. Ayersville needs to bring a fourth guy, rushing three, bring somebody from outside, and there it is. Stoller kind of sidearms this one. It's going to be incomplete. Kind of fastball. We're going to take a look at this replay. Yeah, late rush by Leo Barraza on the outside. Stoller throws it inside, and yeah, Myers is like, hey, fella, I like you a lot, but don't try to get me killed with a line drive in the middle of the field. Yeah, I believe it was that Brady Clark right there with the coverage. And it's going to be third and six from the 10 yard line. Yeah, Myers have been sawed in half. Now they're going to fake him out, going to Tucker Antoine with it. Antoine working forward. He's going to have enough for the state bank first down. It's going to be first and goal at about the one, or call it the two yard line. Clark's going to make the tackle. They're going to go back to Antoine. I think he's in. Yeah, no one was set though, as though Ayersville called the timeout. So the play is not going to count. So the clock stopped again here with a minute 24 to go as Ayersville is going to use its second timeout. So now the officials are going to try to keep the football dry. And it's going to be a first and goal at about the two-yard line as the rain has picked up once again. Here you see that might be about the worst it's been tonight. Here's the bad thing, though, for Ayersville with that rain. You're going to have an onside kick coming up at once Wayne Trey scores, right? It is tough. With the driving rain, the field, an onside kick. That ball can squirt, as we already saw earlier in this game. Wayne Trace got one to start the mm -hmm. half. The ball squirts out. Now you're going to ask guys to, to catch a slick pig. It's going to be tough for Ayersville. It's going to be first and goal when play resumes. So the second run did not count as the officials had stopped play. So Ayersville, according to the scoreboard, used its final timeout. So I believe we are all out of timeouts. Andrew Mickey called timeout because they were stuck in a three-man front with nobody up front. They now tighten the box up. Now fake the pass, go with the run. And that's going to be met by that front for Ayersville. Watch this. He said shot out of a cannon earlier. Oh, Bodai just absolutely comes knifing through. Close lines the running back. Yeah, good look in defensive tackle. 6'1", 245. But on the next play, it's going to be a Leland Smith Insurance Services touchdown as Myers is going to haul it in. A credit Wayne Trace for not waiting around. Got to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Caught Ayersville napping to get a touchdown. Still a lot of things can happen with 101 left. 38-33, and now the idea for Wayne Trace is to get the two point and get down close enough where you can think about getting a field goal to tie. I'll watch for Stoller rolling to the right. And all sorts of movement, and yeah, we're going to get a false start here on this one. All sorts of movement before play started. That might actually help them out, give them a little better spacing. A little too condensed on that trips to the near side. Now back at the eight yard line. If you want to throw a fade, you can here. Everyone at Wayne Trace looking at the sideline. Now they're ready to go. Man coverage to the far side if they want the fade. Stoller thinking about it. He's going to unload this one. And the two point is going to be good. And guess who again? Cole Moorhead. Yeah, Moorhead, is there a little bit of contact here? Eh, maybe a smidge. He stays between the number and the uh, line, the out-of-bounds line. So Moorhead with a two-point conversion. Suddenly, we're at 38-35, and a big onside kick's coming up next here on WOSN. 
Well, no, partner, biggest play of the night coming up here. An onside kick for Wayne Trace as the Raiders have made this a 38-35 game thanks to uh, three touchdowns in the span of about eight and a half minutes. They got to give a lot of credit to Wayne Trace for continuing to fight in this football game. How many times did it look like this thing was over? More than once. And nine guys, ten guys up front. Just to squib this one. Wasn't really much what they thought on an onside. They did recover one to begin the half. This one more of a liner. And that should, I would think, do it. Out of timeouts. Ayersville's going to kind of put this one away. Yeah, Winans kind of, after he kicked the football, put his hands on his hips, was kind of ambivalent of what just occurred. I'm not sure why you kick it like that. It doesn't give you much of an opportunity. Onside kick had to be in order there. Maybe the young man just kind of miskicked it. So Ayersville's going to come out of here with a win, as all the pilots will have to do is take uh, a couple of knees here. The knee? I'm just still kind of shocked by the onside kick. I thought for sure that'd be one on the ground about 10 yards and give yourself right. a chance with the rain. So Ayersville's going to go to 7-2 and two and 5-1. and one. So I want to thank everyone uh, for making our night uh, here at uh, Ayersville possible. So I want to thank uh, everyone there. And uh, also want to thank... Uh, Everyone, it's been a, a long That's night. Go so we're going to no wrap this one up. I want to thank Sam and Curtis for the work the they've done behind the cameras tonight. The They're the one that had to deal with the weather. 38-35, want to thank Rafael Manriquez, the uh, athletic director here at Ayersville. Before we forget, need uh, to mention a Stolle Hustle Award winner brought to you by Stolle Insurance. And I think only fitting for the night he's had. And again, I hope the injury isn't too significant. But uh, Torin can even our uh, Stolle Insurance Hustle Award winner tonight. Yeah, hopefully the young man is back on the football field soon. We're all hoping and, and uh, rooting and praying for you, Torin. TK, let's get you back on the field as soon as possible. So part of the big reason why Ayersville is able to get the win, so the Pilots are going to end up getting a 38-35 win over Wayne Trace for uh, my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire crew here at WOSN. I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.